When we're looking for a place to put a single high mist net, we're looking for a natural flyway, a place where bats are going to be flying in between a roost and a foraging area, or in between foraging areas. Something like this forest trail here is ideal. But we're looking for a spot where we've got overhanging vegetation above or encroaching vegetation from the sides that's going to funnel the bats into our nets so they won't be flying over it or around it. This is a perfect place to put a little single high mist net. Okay, once we've selected the site that we're going to place our mist net, we have to determine which pole we're going to put up first. And usually you pick the place where you don't have a lot of options on moving the pole. Right here we have a lot of very thick, low, overhanging vegetation, and so we don't have a lot of choice on where this pole can go. We also have a little bit of a ravine that goes off down the trail here. So our first pole would be placed right here. And then we can put the second pole off in this vegetation here, which is a little bit more open, and it allows us to run the net off as far as necessary. Our kit bag contains everything we need to set a single high mist net. We have our mist net, a six meter length is going to be perfect for this spot here. We have our poles, four flat poles and two pointy poles. And we have our guy ties, four guy ties, so that we can have a secure set. So let's grab our gear and get started. We're going to take three poles, two flat ones and one pointy one, and put them over here for the, at the far side of the net so they'll be here when we need them. I'm going to put two sections together and just push the pole into the ground and leave the top section down here. Okay, so now we're going to set our first pole. Again, we'll just put two sections together and leave the top section on the ground. We'll just sink the pole in here so it's away from the overhanging vegetation. Excellent. Once the pole is set, it's time to put our net on. If the net was put away properly the last time it was used, it's going to be much easier. But you want to grab the loops out of the bag and pull a small section of net out and then put the rest of the bag under your arm for safekeeping. On any mist net, there's always going to be one odd colored loop. On US made mist nets, the top shelf is represented by the blue. All the other shelves are black. This net has been additionally color coded with little red tape. This means it is a six meter net. Okay, the first thing we want to do is separate the top loop from all the other loops. And to do this, we simply untie the knot at the end of the top loop. And then we pull the top loop out from the silver rings. Now, if this net was put away properly the last time, the first silver ring is going to be the bottom shelf and it's going to go straight on the pole. But if you're not the one who put this net away last, or if it's like this net, it's brand new, then we have to put the loops in order. And to do this, we pull the top loop off, and the side strand right here is going to show us where the next loop is. We simply put all of the loops on our hand in the order that they come out of the net, and when we get to the last loop, we know this is the bottom, and this is the loop that's going to go on first. Now, if we were to put this loop just straight on the pole like so, it would just slide all the way down to the bottom. So instead, we're going to make a girth hitch. So put the loop on your thumb and index finger and twist it back around. Now we can put the loop on the pole. And when we snug it down, it won't slide. Now we put the rest of the loops on using the same procedure. Before you mist net, it's always a good idea to remove any rings or watches because they will inevitably get tangled in the fine strands of the net. You also don't want to wear a shirt with buttons on it for the same reason. Now it's time to guy off the pole. First, we're going to carefully take the net and put it at the base of the pole while it's still in its bag. Then, we want to tie off high on the pole, usually between the third and fourth loop, at about eye level. We want to use a knot that's very secure, yet easy to remove. And we want to wrap the string around the pole a couple of times so that it doesn't slide up and down on the pole. 
we're going to tie a half hitch. And to do that, we do a simple overhand knot to begin with. And then, as if we were making a square knot, except instead of pulling the whole string through, we just pull a loop through. This way, we can put a lot of tension on the knot in any direction, and it's not going to move. And when it's time to take the knot out, we simply pull the tail, and it comes right off. For the most secure set, we're going to want to use two guy ropes. And they both have to be tied at the same height on the pole. In case we ever want to collapse the net, we can bring the loops together without untying any guy ropes. Okay, we want to tie low and away from the pole. Luckily, we have some vegetation right here that we can tie to. If we didn't have vegetation, we'd tie to rocks, or perhaps we would have brought tent stakes along. We want to use the same knot that we used at the pole. And because we're using two guy ties, we want to make sure that they are at right angles to each other. Now it's time to unfurl the net. So we pick up the bag, put it over our arm, and then just let the net play out as we cross the trail. We want to keep a certain amount of tension on the net so it doesn't drag on the ground. When we reach the end of the net, we put it on the second pole. Now we're going to put the net on the pole in the same manner we did on the first pole, making sure that the loops are in order, and using the same girth hitch to secure the loops to the pole. If the net appears to be twisted right now, we're not going to worry about that just yet. Okay, if the net is twisted like ours, the simplest way to untwist it is simply to spread it along one section of the pole, remove the pole, and then twirl it like a baton until the net springs flat. Like that. Okay, before we secure the second pole, we want to go back over to the first pole and put the third section on, and then spread the net along the entire length of the pole. We want the net to be as tall as possible, so when we get the top two loops on the third section, we want to put the top loop all the way up, and then put the pole back on. And now we want to extend the three loops below the guy tie as well. Okay, now we have to set the second pole. We'll put the third segment on. Put the top two loops on the segment, and put the top loop as high as it will go. And then spread the remaining loops. Now, we take the pole out of the ground and pull it back, putting plenty of tension on the net. Now it's time to put the guy ropes on. Now we don't want there to be any sag at all in the net. Now if this is the case, we could simply move the guy ropes up on the pole, or we may have to take the whole pole out and move it back a couple inches. Now we want to fine tune the spacing between the shelves. We don't want the net to be too far apart, because then when the bats hit it, there will be no pocket for them to fall into. We also don't want it to be too close together, because they may fall into a pocket and get tangled in the second one. Proper spacing allows no more than about an inch of bag. Now our net is set and ready to catch bats. You can see we've only removed the bare amount of vegetation, because all of this that we've left remaining will be enough clutter to confuse the bats, so they'll key in on the vegetation and not on our net. To tear down the net, we simply collapse the loops, at the height of the guy ties, removing the third section of the pole to pull the top loop down, and then we repeat the process on the other side. Okay. 
Okay, now we have to take the loops off and keep them in order. So we take the third section of the pole off, and then we take just the top loop off. We thread it through the metal rings, starting with the top ring and working down to the bottom ring. This way, when we open the net the next time, the proper ring is going to be ready to be put on the pole. Once we have the loops through all of the rings, we just tie a simple little overhand knot to secure it. And we repeat the process on the other end. Now we remove the guy ties from the pole and slide the net loops up off the pole, keeping tension on the net to keep it from falling into the vegetation. Okay, now we grab the loops in one hand and then we start walking across, grabbing about a three foot section of the net. Hand over hand, again keeping tension on the net as we fold it up. Okay, now we put the net in the bag. Okay, we're going to loop the handle through our loops, remove the guide ties on this end, and then slide the loops up and over the pole, and put them on the other handle. And then to keep everything nice and organized, we just tie the handles together. Now we collect the rest of our gear, the guy ties, the poles, and the net, and stow it back in our kit bag. Now, we want to make sure that when we put our guy ties back in our kit bag, they don't get all tangled together. So we're going to wrap them up on our fingers like this, and when we have about eight inches left, we're going to change directions, wrap around the middle a couple of times, and then pass the tail through the final loop and snug it down.